The latest addition to the Icon range is the IC9700. So today, let's find out a bit more about this high-spec VHF UHF transceiver. But the reason we're showing you this is because we also want to show you its twin brother, because you've got the HF bands and, of course, 6 metres and 4 metres covered off in this radio. So what about the bands above that? Well, ICOM's new baby, the IC9700, will solve those problems for you. And to tell us about the radio and to put it through its paces for us, we've got Chris, G8, GKC from ICOM. I think you have had radios in the past from ICOM uh, in a range that looked similar. Yes. in terms of the design. But what's interesting about the range that you've got here, so you've got your uh, communications receiver version, you've now got your UHF, VHF radio and your HF radio, that menu-wise, they're very similar. Very, very similar, yes. Yeah, if you're used to using the 7300, you won't have any problems finding your way around the, uh, the 9700. One thing that I notice about this compared with the IC7300, Chris, is that we're displaying two frequencies here. Exactly. It's two independent receivers, um, which um, you can configure just by a touch on the screen. So if it's two completely separate receivers, then we can work in full duplex. In other words, I can transmit on one frequency whilst listening on the other? Yes, yes. It's got um, three separate aerial outputs, so you can isolate the transmit and receive aerials quite easily. And um, yes, you can use it for satellite. Ah, I'm glad you said that because yeah. that's something I'm very interested in. So how many satellite memories do we uh, have? You've this? got 99 satellite uh, memories. It's very simple to use. Select the menu, select satellite. It comes up with the two frequencies and the functions down the side there. Um, main, normal, tra it will track the two receivers. Okay, so it's all the usual things then. You can yeah. have it track reverse or... Yes, yeah, you've got normal or reverse. But very simple. There's no fiddly sort of sub menus to go into. And then you just save it, and you can tag it. Presumably, you can give yeah. it a name in the memory. So the interesting thing about this, then, Chris, is this is a radio that is designed for the amateur bands, specifically for the amateur bands. Yes, yes. Uh, it's got very tight filtering on just the amateur bands. It's not a general coverage receiver, but that's necessary to um, avoid interference from outside the amateur bands on pages, etc. And that is an interesting point, though, because a lot of people, you know, they have a UHF, VHF transceiver, and it's wide-banded, and they're very pleased about that. And they say, oh, it's great, yeah, I can listen to the marine band as well, and I can work the amateur bands. Problem is, though, I get all this crud on two metres, and I can't work any DX because there's a pager up on the hill. So this is the radio that kind of solves that problem. Very early amateur radios used to have very tight helical filters on the amateur bands, and they performed a lot better than sort of models that came along afterwards that had wide front ends. So I think you do need uh, tight filtering. So that's what we're saying is this isn't your scanner for listening to no. other bands. No. This is for working the DX, working the satellites. And again, mm. the filtering very important for satellites. So you're not yeah. dissensing your downlink listening with your exactly. uplink and, yeah. and all yeah. of that. So the filtering very important. And the performance of this, of course, driven by the fact that it's an SDR. It is. Yeah, it's SDR on 2 and 70. Uh, and a transverter, down converter, to 300 megahertz on 23 SEMs. Is there another radio available then, Chris, that has 23 SEMs as standard? No, nothing at the moment. Um, I don't think there ever has been. Um, 23 SEMs has always been an option, and quite an expensive uh, option. Oh, well, maybe it will stimulate a bit of activity on that band as well. Yeah, I mean, the 7300 generated a lot of interest on four metres, so I think this should do the same for 23 SEMs. I remember when I first got my IC7300 yeah. that I found that you could do quite a lot without looking at the manual because the, the menu tree, if you like, was fairly intuitive. Yes. And I think the same applies They've for They've kept the same menu system, yeah. yeah. So how do we get into this then and start adjusting the settings and, and what control have we got over it right. the menus? Right, you've got uh, a menu button on the front there. Um, and these are more or less the same as the 7300. You've got the band scope, audio scope, uh, voice memories, uh, meter function, um, you've got satellite mode, which is a new one, memories, scan, memory pad, uh, voice record, you can record CQs and put them on SD card. Then you've got the main set menu where you can configure it, uh, normally initially, want to get it sort of to work in the way you want it. So you've got all those things that we're familiar with, but what else is in here, Chris, that takes us a bit deeper into the controls on this radio? Um, you'll notice there's a second menu, um, which we can go to there, which has got 
some of the functions for DSTAR, programming call signs, um, gateways, etc. You've also got a GPS uh, button there. Um, you can input GPS data um, on the data socket on the back, or you can manually program your Latin long, um, which allows you to um, uh, do a search and find all your local DSTAR repeaters. Um, and it'll also tell, tell you how far away the stations are you're working and what bearing they are. And when we want to get very technical, we hit this button on the end and that's where we might start setting up stuff for our data or yeah. for remote control and yeah. some of the It's a very things. comprehensive menu. A lot of these things you'll only set once initially. Uh, tailor the receive audio, transmit audio, uh, obviously programming your call signs figure the network. Uh, it's also got a built-in network um, server so you can just plug it straight into your router. Now I know after we did the feature on the remote control of the IC7300 yeah. we had a lot of conversations with people about the setting of that up because the only slightly tricky bit is setting up your PC as a server and then connecting yeah. the radio to it so it does away with all of that. Yes, yeah, you can set the, the radio um, up internally. The only thing you probably will have to do is uh, play around with your router Mm. and open up a few ports, but uh, other it makes that, it much more straightforward. So you yeah. plug this straight into your router. I imagine then that you needed some different software for the remote control for this one because we've got the uh, two receivers in here. There is a new version that was uh, produced for 7610 and also this model, which um, allows you to use dual receive. And is that back compatible though to the 7300? And, and uh, it's back compatible, yeah, yeah, but obviously you wouldn't use the features on the 7300. No, but I was just thinking if you had both radios, yeah. you could have the one piece of software. Just one piece of software. Fantastic. Yeah. And it does connect via USB to a PC, so for yeah. your data modes and everything else, that's the same as the 7300. Yeah. It's got USB and it's also got a, a LAN socket for remote connection. Yeah, fantastic stuff. That's good. So the interesting thing about this, folks, is, is while you're saving up for your 9700, if you know something somebody else who's got one, maybe he'll let you use his remotely from time to time just to whet your appetite, as, as long as they give you permission. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Having spun the 9700 around then, Chris, the first thing that I noticed compared with its HF brother is there's rather a lot of connectors on the back. Yep, yeah, yeah. You've got um, an SO239 for two metres, then two N types, one for uh, 70, the other one for 23 cents. Um, power socket's the same. Uh, you've got a bank of 35 millimeter sockets here. Um, there's your key jack, remote, uh, and two sockets, main and sub, for speaker output. Um, you've got uh, a USB-B socket for connecting to your computer, uh, a 2.5 millimeter data socket, uh, that's for putting in GPS data and, and taking data out, a standard DIN socket there for analog interfacing, sort of audio in, audio out. Which have been on the Icon rigs yeah, since time that, that, immemorial. That layout has sort of been there since yeah. uh, the year dot. Um, big fan, as you mentioned. Um, you've got a, a SMA socket there, which you can input a 10 megahertz frequency standard to calibrate the radio against. Um, so you just put in the signal there and you've got two menu items which allow you to get the internal reference spot on. And there's your uh, LAN socket for uh, connecting to your router. So it used to be in the old days that you had a mic socket and an antenna socket, and that was pretty much all your connections. But these days it is all about connectivity, particularly with the data modes. So I think you've got all the angles covered here, Chris. How would you summarize this radio? Um, well, it's a brilliant uh, VHF, UHF base station. Um, there's really been nothing to touch it, I don't think, in the past. And um, for anyone that's serious about VHF operating, it's the one to go for. Fantastic. Thanks for showing us around the IC9700.